Impact. Jim Cornette was in a steel cage. He announced the main event of the April 15th lockdown pay-per-view was a 10-man, that means two teams of five, lethal lockdown. He explained the rules. It's basically war games, which is fine. Yeah. Introduced captain number one, Christian. Captain number two was Kurt Angle. He said each man had to pick their own teammates. He advised them to choose quickly and choose wisely. And I thought, why quickly? What's the hurry? <laughs> well, he, well, he penalized why, them fairly. Why can't he wait till April 15th? Why can't he have a couple mystery men? Perhaps that would throw their, his opponents off their game. Well, because Jim Cornette's mean. Must be. So Christian tried to bitch, and Cornette told him to shut up. We got a wrestling show here, so let's let's get it on the road. And so this wrestling show got on the road with another interview. Well, yeah, but before that, he, he said, let's get the show on the road. The impact music started, and, and Christian stood at the top of the ramp shouting, no, shut up, I have something to say, I'm the world champion. And the music kept playing, and then went to commercial with, with Christian ranting and making the champion look like the biggest dork in the company again. Yeah. So they got the show on the road with the interview, like I said. It was AJ in the ring with a neck brace, a crutch, and an ankle thing on. He said the doctor told him his neck, back, and ankle would never be the same. Also, the cage was still there. Yeah. He said, I can't even call my wife and tell her I won't be able to make any money or put food on the table for the children. Rhino, come out here and call my wife. And I thought, he hadn't been home all week. She didn't watch the pay-per-view. She's unaware her husband's injured after four days. This actually made sense in the end, but... So, out Rhino came, and, and they got an argument, and, and AJ's like, Listen, I understand what you were trying to... I understand you were trying to help me. I understand. And I thought, help him with what? He threw you off the X. What am I missing here? <laughs> what part of the story am I missing? What was Rhino trying to help AJ with? Perhaps a video package would have helped. A video package here would have helped substantially, but... <laughs> After thinking about it, I, I did recall that this whole shebang started because Rhino didn't want to see AJ and Chris Daniels fight. <laughs> okay, so he's referencing something mm -hmm. from 2006. Yes. Likely the middle of 2006. Well, late, it was late 2006. And they didn't show a recap. No. Nor did they mention Daniels by name. Boy, they're dumb. They are, in fact, dumb. So, yeah. So then uh, AJ's like, I just want this to be over. So they shook hands, and, and of course, as Rhino turned his back, AJ tried to hit him with the crutch. Rhino, of course, caught it. And so then AJ had to kick him in the balls after that. Beat the crap out of him, and then uh, after commercial, Christian was beating on Rhino. Yeah, they went to commercial as the men started brawling in the cage. When they came back, the fight was still going on. Yeah, and then Angle and Joe made the save, and Christian ran for his life. And that was that. I thought AJ was awesome here. He had to... Uh, yeah. Being injured and being cowardly, I mean, to, to be the injured person with the big scary guy in the ring, it, your instinct there would be to cheer for the injured guy because he's, he's, you know, the, the underdog. But AJ was such a pussy that everyone hated him anyway. Hmm. Hmm. And he's a heel. Well, and he's a heel. Then we had LAX cutting a promo with their new pal, Alex Shelley. <laughs> this was just wacky. <laughs> But it worked, unlike it, a lot of the wackiness on this show. It works great. He's a guy that just doesn't fit in, but they, they have enough respect for his ability to have him in the group. But sure. they realize he's a white guy. Oh, he's very white. And they, 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 they look sideways at him. <laughs> his name's Patrick, for crying out loud. They should put that in the storyline. Then we had a wacky meeting with Jeremy Borash, Chris Saban, and Bob Backlund. I must interrupt you. You forgot the best part of the Conan Shelley package, or uh, promo, which is where Conan... I, I, <laughs> I think he said to Bubba, your stupidity is matched only by your obesity. <laughs> <laughs> I did miss that. <laughs> that was a great line. That was another funny line later, actually. So then we had Borash Saban and Backlund in a, in a segment that went like two minutes, and they've only got an hour. Mm. They've only got an hour. I need a, 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 just a sound effect of somebody crying, just weeping. <laughs> <laughs> only got an hour. We only have one hour. We don't have time. We only have one hour. We don't have time. You can't tell stories in one hour. That it's easier to be negative when, when all you gotta do is type in your thoughts on a keyboard. An hour 
Our show is 42 minutes. We don't have time. Shut the hell up! Then Nash was in the ring with Sanjay Dutt. You don't want to talk about the other segment anymore? No. <laughs> Unless you really want to recap something utterly useless. Jeremy Borash here backstage with the current X Division champion of the world, Chris Saban. Among others, and at Destination Access last Sunday night, Chris Saban successfully defended the X Division title against Jerry Lynn. I'm sorry, Jeremy, are you done? I apologize if uh, my video game playing is interrupting your interview time. I'm sitting here busy trying to pwn noobs in God of War 2. Why? Because, quite frankly, I'm the God of Wrestling. Well, if you're the God of Wrestling, maybe you can tell me what... Uh... Well, back when he's going back here. I don't know what he's doing. He's been doing for the last two hours of the Gentlemen, morning. gentlemen, are you having discourse in regards to Mr. Blackland? It seems like you're being a little exclusionary up here to me. Well, I'm not being exclusionary. I don't know. Maybe well, who is it? Uh, no, we're just sitting here playing video games. What are you doing? Are you training? What do you think I'm doing back there, young man? You look like you're going up and down the steps. Yeah, yeah, I am! But you, why'd you ask if you knew? We're just up here playing well, video what, games. What? That's all we're doing is a simple video game. Playing video games? Hey, hey, playing video games, playing video games. Why are you doing that here? We're supposed to be training. We're supposed to be getting prepared for battle. And you're starting to exacerbate me, young man. You're making me a little angry. And I'm in. You're making me a little angry, too. It was worse than useless because Saban was playing a video game backstage, which I'm sure they, they, they have a sponsor to be able to have to do, but the end of this was Bob Backlund was working out, and he wanted to train. He wanted everyone else to train. Saban didn't want to train. He wanted to play video games. Uh, so once again, Saban, who is the X Division champion, comes off looking like a goof, which I will forgive because he did use the phrase poning noobs, which if he brings that into all his promos, that'll help. Oh, you're a geek. That would make him even a bigger geek. You just complained he was a geek. Yeah, and now he... you endorse bigger geek. At least then he'd be a funny geek. Oh, I see. Yeah. That makes sense. Then we had Wacky, uh, or I'm sorry, Nash was in the ring with Dutt, which was Wacky. Called out Jay Lethal, and now it's Randy Savage's old music, and they said Nash was trying to develop the characters of these men. So... <laughs> Then we had a three-way with Lethal, Kaz, and Jerry Lynn, and Sanjay Dutt was, had just been there. Yes. He was just there because that was his one minute on TV this week. He wasn't in the match. Nope. They couldn't throw him in the match. He just was there for a second. Right. They're like, Sanjay, shit, we don't have you on the show. All right, go out with Nash. Just be there for a minute. Okay, great. Just get a bunch of geeks on TV. That's the whole point of this. This That's how you book wrestling. Just a lot of geeks on TV. <laughs> so enough bodies out there. I don't think anyone's ever thought of that before. So anyway, they had a, actually, a, this was the first TV match in as long as I can remember where the fans chanted, that was awesome on television. And it, it really was. And this was, it's been months. It's been since before, what a coincidence, Vince Russo came in. Yeah. So lethal pin Cavs with the lethal combo. And then Chris Daniels' beard hit the ring, beat up all the men, and that was that. Now, Christian announced AJ was the first recruit for his team. What's going on? I think it's pretty damn obvious what's going on. AJ Styles is the first recruit for Team Cage at Lethal Lockdown, and why not? Look at this guy. Probably the greatest athlete in TNA, and he wants to be a huge star in TNA. And what a better way to become one than by aligning yourself with the Instinct Classic. Christian Cage. Christian, that's not what we talked about. You, you said that if I line myself with you, I get a title shot. And then what we agreed on, remember? Yeah, Tom Coke said that too, actually, didn't, didn't you? Get a, hey, hey, why would you bring that up, man? Uh, I thought it was understood that, that, that we were just going to keep that between you and I. I mean, where's the trust? If we don't have trust, AJ, then what do we have? That hurts me, man. That hurts me right in the feelings. Why would you say that? I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know it was No, no, no. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. We'll worry about that after lockdown. But what we need to worry about right now is assembling an unstoppable unit. And, Kurt, no matter who you choose for Team Angle, the chances are I've already beaten him anyway. Yeah, you probably have beat him. Yeah, that's what I just said. I probably uh, beat him. But, AJ, right now, tonight, we're going to find out who the third member 
of Team Cages. Let's go. AJ said he was under the impression that if he teamed with Christian, he'd get a title shot, and Christian was hurt that this would be brought up right now. Exactly, River. You hurt me right in the feelings. <laughs> AJ apologized, and they said they were going to announce Man 3 next. Then they went off to find him. Yeah. LAX Alex Shelley against Team 3D, and they had Johnny Raws out there. Bubba Dudley is now spherical. He's got a big cast on his arm, and they beat on it. Conan did commentary and mentioned Krispy Kreme and Butterbean. That was his name for Team 3D. <laughs> We've mentioned for a while that Bubba's fat. We, we have not mentioned this, but it's true. Devon's also put on some pounds. He's fat, but he's, he's at least looks like he lifts a weight here and there. He, he, he is scary fat. Yeah. Bubba's just fat, and... and, and Conan referred to, him that, referred to them as Krispy Kreme and Butterbean. Yeah. <laughs> I like my name. Spike was in the ring, and today uh, Conan's like, is he drunk right now? And Tina goes, it's Brother Run. What do you think? And I thought, I don't know. What do I think? <laughs> he was drunk three months ago, and I haven't heard anything about it since. The, the character was so defined when he came out as a drunk Santa Claus. That I'm supposed to know he's been drunk ever since. He has not been sober in the past three months, no. <sighs> so anyway, the... Uh, they put Alex Shelley through a table, but no ref. And then Hernandez rolled up Devon. The ref rushed in and counted the pin. So Hernandez and Homicide won. And, and Shelley actually stayed in the ruins. <laughs> he may still be there, actually. He's, he was killed, yes. And then uh, Conan said, we've taken nearly everything from Team 3D. Now we're going to take the only thing left, your legacy. And Bubba Ray was sad. A legacy of, of obesity? What is this legacy? Maybe they'll ban tables from wrestling. The most fake titles. <laughs> the most fake titles won. The most uh, the most one man has ever taken advantage of younger wrestlers in the ring. What is their legacy? I don't know what the legacy of the Dudleys is. They won a lot of fake belts. I mean, seriously, uh, when I think of the Dudleys, it's like, what if, what if Bubba Ray and Devon were in a plane and it went down? And I was writing the bio. I mean, could I really write? The greatest tag team of all time, the Dudleys, went down in a plane crash. I wouldn't. Probably not. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would write I don't even their... know if I would write the greatest tag team of their era. <sighs> they managed to stay together for a long time. There's something. And they have. I don't know what the legacy of the Dudleys is. And we had more with... Oh, I saw... Actually, Serotonin was doing some wackiness. This was wacky. They're about to embark on a journey into pain. <laughs> That was what he even said in his <laughs> Halloween costume. <laughs> so, God bless Raven. Does he watch this stuff and realize how wacky it is? He, he's like, he's my, not stupid. My he men must. are about to embark on a journey of pain. I don't care about wins and losses. I never have. I only care about the f- psychological pain. What was the word he used? Because I wrote embarking again. <laughs> Inflicting. He, he, inflicting psychological pain in his opponents. He didn't even care about physical pain. Yeah. He wants to hurt their feelings. Yes. <laughs> he wanted them to all feel like they did when their parents beat them as children. So they, he wanted them to cane Kaz and they refused, so he came them. He just like hit them with a stick and they went, ow! And well, that was it. The best was uh, Matt, Maverick Matt, who I guess is martyr now. <laughs> he <laughs> threw a stick down. So Raven hit about eight of the pussiest slaps you ever saw, and then Martyr pouted and left. <laughs> Shit. So he turned to Johnny Devine, whose name I totally forget, and he said, here... Havoc. Havoc. <laughs> Sorry, there's another Havoc I know who I don't want to get confused, but he turned, he turned to him and said, here, you cane him. And Havoc put the stick down, so Raven caned him. And <laughs> Raven turned to the camera and said something, and it was all so terribly hokey, and I, I, I guess this counts as build... He won't, He now wants them to hit each other, and they refuse. I guess that's where it's it's gone. The uh, build, yeah, sure. No one cares. Oh God! <laughs> this show. Then we had Eric Young and Robert Roode, and as you said, who could care? I don't even want to talk about it. Christian cut a promo. He introduced the third member of Team Cage, Abyss. Wow! Said Mike Tanay. So he came down the ramp, and then Sting appeared. And even though they beat the shit out of each other and put each other in coffins on Sunday, now they're friends. And he said Abyss had one more thing to admit for his own good, which we'll learn next week, which is that he has a normal mom. And then Christian and Sting argued, and then Cornette said, Next week, 
Christian and AJ versus Sting and Abyss. We'll find out what team Abyss is on. Sounds like he's on Sting's team. <laughs> what it sounds like. So Sting said no, and he was totally babbling his lines. I don't know what happened, but finally he just goes, let's do it right now. And he jumped in the ring, and they all brawled, and, and I've seen worse impacts. That's all I can say about yeah, that. Yeah, I just know that we just watched the pay-per-view last Sunday, and I think every feud from that pay-per-view, most of which had stipulation matches, is still going on. Yeah, nothing ever changes. Nothing. It's not even, you can't even say the treading water. I mean, it's the same show. Yeah. That's bad. Let's see. Thumbs down for impact.